Hey guys, welcome to another episode in the big playthrough of Grand Turismo 7. It's been a couple of days because in the meantime, uh, after work, I decided I started reading the manual that is actually, I think over here. Um, and ah, are we now going offline or uh, to a website? No, but anyways, this was way longer than I expected. So this really took a couple of days. And then after that, there's also this Beyond the Apex magazine, which has some um, additional, oh shit, wrong button. Additional tips and tricks on car settings, the game, etc. Also quite elaborate. So yeah, really, I took a couple of days reading through all of that. I must say, not that much um, new things. Maybe for the car tuning, there were some some handy tips. And also, uh, what I am uh, going to test out is ABS. I have it currently on because I know it's quicker than than no ABS, as opposed to uh, traction control, which you really should turn off. That really makes you slower. But ABS is the other way around. Uh, turning it off makes makes um, uh, you slower, so you have to keep it on, but you have two settings, uh, default and weak. And apparently, I'm not sure, but default makes it a little bit harder to, to trail brake. So braking while you are entering a corner, while you are steering. Um, but apparently, even so, it weak is um, in between off and default. And it also makes you a bit, is apparently a bit slower than default. Uh, but still, I, I have it now on default and I am yeah, getting quite some gold, so that's all good. But I'm going to try ABS weak just to see how the car dynamics change. And if I then um, yeah, am not able to um, get good times, then I will probably revert it back to default. And also head wobble, that's an, um, for immersion, you can um, increase it. I think I may have already did so, I don't remember, but I'm going to check it out. Well, in car, just to make it a little bit more uh, immersive, like uh, a little bit of camera shake. So that are two items that I took away from all that reading. And then for the rest, not that much actually. To be honest, I found it a little bit of a, of a messy manual and magazine because there are quite some, I think typos in there. At one point it said like uh, reducing, yeah, it, there were just some inconsistent sections and it also seems that that's somehow an, an art, uh, a, a, a section or a chapter abruptly ended. Like you would, it, it almost seems that they just either forgot copying in some text there or just deleted it. And there were also quite, uh, not that many, but uh, some grammar and uh, errors and typos. So. It, it's nice to have it in there. It really gave me um, um, a, a throwback to the good old times where you had like a physical manual and before playing the game, you could uh, really read it. Like I remember Command and Conquer, always uh, the PC strategy game, real-time strategy game, um, or isometric strategy game. Uh, had really cool manuals with all the different units and stuff and what they could do. And it really helped you uh, play the game better. Uh, and I think GT4 had as well, and I'm sure GT3 had, I don't remember, but also those manuals were cool. So I'm happy that there is also at least a digital version of a manual here. But yeah, if, if you uh, don't have the time, I would uh, say you're not missing out on much by not reading it. Um, it was not like um, that I had some major... Uh, uh, pointers. There's only one tip that I am uh, that was really handy with car tuning with the gearing. Uh, it's always good to check whether at the end of the longest straights, uh, whether you are nearing your um, uh, the RPM limit. So you're not like all in the sixth gear all low in the um, RPMs. Because if so, then you can better um, adjust it so that you are. Uh, in the highest gear uh, near the RPM limits to um, yeah, make, it make your gearing fit the track as best as possible. Because if you have like a lower RPM at the end of the long straight, 
that means that, that your gearing is just too long and that also means you have less acceleration in uh, slower corners. Um, and also another one is that if you are going through the slowest turn in the section, that it's also good to check whether you can take them uh, within the power range of the car, like the, 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 the optimal torque range, which mostly is, I don't know, between three and six or four and five, three and five thousand RPM or something. Uh, and if not, if you are like, like uh, too low, in the uh, RPM range in the second gear or you, you are not even able to go into second gear for instance first gear or very high in second gear that you're almost like in third gear then it, it could also be um, beneficial to adjust that second gear a bit and then between second gear on the slowest corners and uh, highest gear on at the end of a long straight if it's there at all you can do the in-between gears like uh, in uh, equal um, uh, uh, parts, so to say. Just spread them out equally and that should uh, give you uh, a, a pr pretty basic uh, or a baseline for gearing uh, fitting a certain track. So that really was one eye-opener for me. Um, but yeah, so that's a long rant. Let's get back in the game. I have no idea what we were doing. I think there are no road circuits, uh, circuit experience to do anymore. I think all the tracks that are now unlocked. Um, yeah, Watkins Glen I did as well. I did all the circuit experiences here. Let's check it over here. Tsukuba Suzuka, I think we did that in the recent episode, maybe even the last one. So, I would say we will just be doing uh, a cafe. Oh, and one other thing that I uh, uh, read, I was not aware, but for sport mode, for online, you actually has to have to have a PlayStation Plus subscription, which I find a little bit retarded. Why, why is that needed? A lot of games, if you, if you want to play online, you just go online. Now you have to pay, I don't know, 10 bucks a month or something. Which, yeah, there is like the, now this Black Friday deal going on. So it's like 50 or 60 bucks for a full year. But still, it's like double the price of the game uh, just to go online. Which, yeah. I understand I have to pay the servers, but it's not like Sony is a small company or anything. So I find it a little bit uh, weird that you basically uh, have to pay double the price of the game just to make use of its online features. But yeah, maybe that's just me being a cheapskate. But I will probably be um, uh, buying um, the Black Friday deal of PlayStation Plus. Uh, before I think it expires November 28th, so I have to do it within this week. <coughs> Anyways, here we go. Tune a classic car. Tune a 96 5 Mini Cooper S to 360 pp. So here the tuning shop is now open. Your goal is to create a car that can be entered in Europe Sunday Cup. Why not try to tune your 96 5 Mini Cooper S so it has a pp of at least 360? Sports tires are sure to have a big impact, but you, you can do whatever it takes to reach the Magic 360. Oh, and don't forget, you can only tune the car you're currently driving. So get the 65 Mini Cooper S out of your garage and head on over to the tuning shop. If you're not sure about what any of the parts do, just ask Rupert, the shop owner, he'll help you out. Oh, well, shit, I have to start it. Um, anyways, uh, maybe it did help that I read the... Um, Manual. I mean, most of it I already knew from past games, but still, it's a nice refresher. So at least now the tuning menu, I've really been reading up about it. So uh, that's nice. Still, for me, what is a very complex part of tuning is the um, suspension, the damping, rebound, and bounce, like compression and depression I'm not sure what even the opposite is of you compress and you're depressed or something um, yeah that's totally avocado to me still 
uh, the spring rate, etc. One good tip is that if you have, I think, uh, stickier tires, like racing tires, that also means you can have higher Gs, so your body roll will be more than compared to uh, less sticky tires. And that means that if you have stickier tires, you should also increase your, uh, your spring rates and your damping, um, uh, make your damping stiffer to um, uh, reduce the extra body roll that the extra grip of the tires bring. So that's a good one. Uh, anyways, let's get into that car. What's the PP? Performance points 261. So we have to uh, increase it by 100. All right, and let's see in that menu whether there is. Uh, oh, this is tuning. actually first want to check the settings the um, yeah which is I'm not sure whether why it's not in the tuning shop no, it's not here I would say it's a bit weird I would have that menu there as well like the actual uh, changing of the tuning settings here car settings here we go also this one, natural frequency, that's some kind of an overall damping and um, suspension geometry setting that takes the, the way the springs, where they are located, like uh, in a McPherson um, type strut, it's different than for instance a double wishbone um, suspension setup where the, the spring actually is closer inboard than compared to McPherson, where the, the, the spring or the, the is actually more outwards. It's part of the uh, vertical column that supports the wheel. Uh, that is one thing that is relevant for um, uh, suspension setup. And then of course the damping rate and, and the spring rate itself and that all together I think amounts into this natural frequency setting but here ah here it is that's the opposite you have compression and then you have expansion that's what I, I said depression but of course it's not depression it's expansion um, but yeah let's worry about this later I find it a bit weird that this menu is not in the tuning shop itself it would make sense to also be able to adjust your tuning settings in a tuning shop. I have to say hi to my cat. People! Come in here. Okay. My cat, she's really old. It's really weird. Always, if I call her now, she doesn't look at me. She looks 180% in the opposite direction. So, I think there may be something a little bit wrong with her earring, unfortunately. And also, occasionally with her eyesight, it's very sad. Sometimes she has like, it only is a couple of hours, but it seems like a total blindness, blindness episodes. Already giving her blood pressure reduction medicines, because apparently in cats, also older cats, high blood pressure can damage her retinas, her, her eye uh, working. Anyways, um, let's continue. I'm blabbering way too much. We have comfort hearts. Yeah, let's do sports tires, I would say. Let's see what this does. It goes to 358. I would say that's totally fine. We are uh, yeah, more or less what we need, around 360. So uh, I find this is good enough. I'm not going to overdo the tuning because the game is already easy as it is up until now. So um, yeah, uh, I want to be able to have a little bit of a challenge. 
so I'm not going to max it out. I will for sure for fun max out a couple of cars later on, fully tune them to uh, everything that is tunable, but for now let's just keep it a bit moderate. There is like this red icon over there, let's see, see what it is. It also become a little bit annoying that you have to press all the new icons away manually but i think it will only be new icons for new dlc cars i mean all the other cars are here now as well and there is n n nowhere a new icon so probably i'm worrying about nothing all right i'm really in my renting mode or not renting mindlessly blabbering about mode sorry for that anyways uh, we have to now get to that european sunday cup i think for the menu book right no idea what i it's a little bit unclear these menu books let's double check we were already in the tuning shop what the hell ah uh, it's probably because I have 358 and it wants me to really do uh, 360. Fine by me. Um, let's just put on some sport pads. Where will it bring us? No, this will not do anything. 0.84 of a PP. Sport filter? Yes, 361. Very nice. All right, now we have to go back to the cafe. Nice work, you did exactly what was required. Tuning's pretty tricky, isn't it? No, it was pretty easy. Worth doing though. There are lots of parts that can be used in various ways to improve the car's performance. There are also parts like power restrictors and balance ballast designed to actually lower your car's BP. Have fun exploring the wild world all right LSS a road circuit track has been made available nice so we can do another circuit experience Sardinia another circuit experience and we have a new menu book European hot hatches let's do that later on now I'm curious let's see what it requires a part 500 mini Cooper s2005 Polo GTI 14. So these are basically the same as the uh, Mini and the uh, Abarth Fiat 500 that I already had from an earlier menu book, but that are the, were the original cars. These are like the um, second iterations, like the relaunches of them in the uh, early 2000s. Um, all right, so let's go. By the way, that woman was there as well again. Let's see what she has to say. And there's a new guy over here. Are you a car history buff? Yes. Great, then you want to hear this. When the Mini was born in 59, it revolutionized the world of small front wheel drive vehicles. Designed by the English engineer Alec Isigenis. Is it sported a uniquely positioned engine and gearbox. This maximized the space saving potential of its front wheel drive layout. The result was a small and fast car with a roomy interior. The Mini's historic front wheel drive layout is now widely referred to as an exogenous layout. And why shouldn't it be? It was designed by the brilliant engineer after all. All right, anyways, I, one thing that also um, jumped to mind, what I did uh, also found valuable in the manual and that uh, beyond the apex um, magazine uh, is the um, the scapes uh, explanation I'm, i was not i didn't do that that much in gran turismo sport but i do like it and i'm for sure going to make uh, hopefully some nice scapes pictures compositions um, and also the livery editor, it was also in me. So there were certainly, it was not totally lost time. So if you do have the time, contrary to what I said before, I do think it's, it's fun to just read the manual and uh, the Beyond the Apex book. All right, let's see, does she go on a loop? How does this work? 
Yes, this is a loop. Who is this guy? About this car here, hmm, I see. Chris, I see you've been working hard today. This is Chris, he loves to evaluate, assess and appraise. Good to see you both. Yes, it's true. When I see a nice car, I just can't help checking it out. People around here call me the automobile inspector. Now let's see what we have here. When it comes to speedy little packages, the first thing that comes to mind is this Mini. While the original British Minis may have been built as a compact people's car, they are performance machines. The first to notice the Mini's hidden talents was the car constructor Cooper. That's right, of F1 fame. They were the artists behind the sporty Mini Cooper S. It's great. Achievements in races and rallies are the stuff of legends. This model with an improved engine displacement of 970cc is an especially priced installment of the series. Very nice. Alright, we are done here. Um, let's get to the track. Also what is maybe fun, I would say, with ABS is to actually turn it off in cars that did not have ABS. Just for a more authentic experience. Maybe I will do that in this car. Um, because this one for sure did not have ABS. Here we go, Alsace. Oh. Why doesn't it say available? event we have to did we already complete that book i thought we all right maybe we completed it i thought we also had to take part in that uh sunday european sunday cup events that's pretty weird ah, so it was only tuning a classic car I cannot read it anymore, but it said something to be able to enter European Sunday Cups or something. So I, I assumed we also had to enter it, doing the tuning for an actual reason, but apparently not, which is fine. And then in the meantime, let's just do that new menu book, just buying a couple of cars. Mini S05, a Barth 09, and a GTI 14. These are really easy to do. If the cars are on sale, that is. Yeah, this is 1970. No. Hmm, they're not really on sale, I would say. Ah, here's one. This one we need. I do like the styling, but unfortunately I find there are too many of them. They are really like too mundane. Um, Alright, but the other one, the Abarth and the Polo, I don't see them. Oh! the uh, time limit, sorry for that annoying sound. Um, Alright, so let's leave that. By the way, what was the car to the right? This one. What the hell is this? A Honda. Pretty cool. We could go to Brand Central maybe. Let's check it out. Now we have an invitation, another one. I already had this invitation. What the hell? Why doesn't that not get cleared? I bought these two. So that's really confusing because if you are back from a long hiatus, you may buy them again if you're not careful. Ah, no, it already says acquired. It's the uh, little bit above the um, car icons to the right of the screen. 
but still I would then maybe remove that invo invitation icon as well. Um, anyways, let's go to Volkswagen and Fiat is what we need. Here. But this is an 08. I'm pretty sure I need an 09. Maybe I'm mixing it up, but I'm pretty sure it was an 09. And this was, I think, an 014. Polo. Here, that's the one we need, I think. Let's check the rest. This looks like a real life car. I was not aware that they already make like fully electric sports cars. Totally not for me. That's why I'm not uh, really into that stuff. All right, let's buy this one. Let's give it a cool color. And there are not that many colors. Let's just go with white, always safe. This fifth generation Polo GTI is a petite old hatch that's a size smaller than the Golf. Which stands to reason is the original Polo debuted in 1975 as the Golf's little brother. This generation Polo GTI came with two different engines depending on whether it's an early model or a late model. But this is the late model that they debuted in 2014 which came with a turbocharged 1.8 <coughs> liter inline four cylinder engine. It's capable of producing 190 bhp and 25 kilograms of per meter or something of torque from just 1250 rpm. Small but speedy, this model also features an upgraded chassis and improved handling. And really nice, those little uh, bits of information. Let's, man, these splash screens are so annoying. I really wish they would not, that you could disable them. Um, let's get to the menu book and see what we needed. Yeah, we need an Abarth 2009 hints. How the second return of the Abarth is a time as 500. Bold looks and bolder driving performance. How to acquire used cars, Grand Central by spending credits. Alsace by competing in the above world circuits race. Ah, okay, so there is a link to it. So let's do that Alsace race. Recommended car. Alright, those are quite some quicker cars. Clio RS220. I don't understand what they say with above Alsace race. I don't see a race above. By competing in the above world circuits race. Uh, maybe Alsace is what I mean with above. It's like one sentence above it. What kind of cars are generally in it? Damn it. No, but it said circuit. There are no race events taking place, so it will not be a circuit experience, not an arcade race, no time trial, no drift trial. So, how the hell does this even work? It's so annoying. Me. Spending quite some time going from menu to menu just checking out what you need to do. Maybe it's just me that I'm retarded. Could very well be. But it says... Ah, I have to start it again? What the hell? I already started this one, right? Or didn't I? Ah, uh, that's maybe it. I didn't start it yet. This time around I want you to collect European hot hatches. 
Hatchbacks are small cars with a rear door hinged at the roof. The hot just means that they are extra speedy. Lots of neat little hot hatches have been produced in Europe over the years. If you're going to be racing in a mini tuned to 360pp or more, then you should target the race at Brands Hatch. Once you've collected all three cars, come back here and see me. I do watch these little uh, intros and outros because it really gets you, the, the game is quite slowly paced and it gets you from like um, a um, jumpy quick mindset back to like the game space so to say. Uh, yeah, so now we need to go to World Circuit, but we need to go to Alsace. Not the brand hatch one. This one, third place or higher. All right, what kind of cars? What is the PP? Suggest PP 400. What do we have? 400. Just go with this one, right? We could see how far I get in this one, but it's probably top speed is way too low. It will be annoying. Let's just go with the mini. And what do we do? Eight cars, three laps. A beginner's race for European sports cars compete against 400 PP class rival cars. Right, and this is the whole Alsace circuit. I thought it was bigger. This is a uh, test course reverse. All right, here we go. Oh, by the way, um, I have to end the episode already way over 25 minute marker. So we'll continue immediately in the next one. Guys, hope you enjoyed. Hope to see you there. For the meantime, don't forget, always do keep on gaming. Later.